Hi everyone, my name is Tess Hayes. To start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land I'm presenting from today, from the lands of the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. And I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and any original custodians listening in today. Today, I'm presenting on some recent work around unpacking the opportunities and barriers to co-created citizen science. This presentation is based on a soon to be published paper by Dr. J. Gunnell, Dr. Yela Golombic, Michelle Cooper and myself. As we are once again at an AXA conference, I would like to acknowledge the origins of this work as AXA has played an important part. In 2018, at AXA's second conference, Dr. J. Gunnell led a symposium titled Co-Created Citizen Science. How, when and why? Attendees included citizen science practitioners, project leaders and, and scientists involved in citizen science projects. Jade initiated discussions with attendees on roles, expectations and approaches expected from co-created citizen science. Following the conference, analysis of the symposium discussion identified several common themes that practitioners considered when determining whether a co-created approach should be used. These included time, scientific needs, project beneficiaries, engagement objectives, ethics, organizational relationships, resources, question scope, community dynamics, motivation, and the scale of projects. We built on these ideas on the literature and through an iterative de deliberation process focused on unpacking the central themes that challenge both adoption and success of co-created citizen science. These include resourcing, fostering, partnerships and ensuring reciprocal benefits for communities and for science. To frame today's topic of co-created citizen science, I would first like to orientate the practice. In the citizen science literature and practice more broadly, three levels of participation are commonly accepted. First described by Bonnie et al. 2009, they include contributory, collaborative and co-created approaches. Both contributory and collaborative projects are described as those that are designed by scientists. And in the contributory case, citizens are specifically consigned to data collection, whereas collaborative projects offer further participation where citizens, as well as collecting data, may also help refine project design analyze data or disseminate findings. Co-creation is the most participatory of the three models. Bonnie et al. 2009 defines them as projects designed by scientists and members of the public working together and for which at least some of the public participants are actively involved in most or all steps of the scientific process. In practice, co-created projects often emerge from community needs which means that there is an increased interest in delivering direct benefits for citizen communities. Co-created citizen science departs and differentiates itself from much scientist-led and directed projects, striving for a more democratic production of science, placing greater value on the contribution of lay people and providing opportunities for greater societal impact and collective problem solving. Examples show that co-created approaches can contribute to interventions and change on a local policy and community level. By maintaining citizen participation throughout the whole process, co-created projects ensure that the research questions, methodologies, data collection, analysis, interpretation, and subsequent outcomes are grounded in the reality and context of the community in need. This means the outcomes are more meaningful for them than those conducted through research situated outside of the community context. Through this presentation, I hope to impart that co-created citizen science offers practical tools for increasing public participation in scientific research, empowers communities and advances situated scientific knowledge. However, delivering these approaches present a number of key challenges around funding, 
fostering working partnerships between scientists and citizens and ensuring all stakeholders receive sufficient benefits from the process. We have broadly grouped these three challenges as follows. Resourcing, challenging funding bodies to be more open and creative about what they're willing to invest in. Fostering partnerships, challenging the notion of scientists as the sole knowledge holders. And three, ensuring reciprocal benefits, challenging traditional scientific outputs, outcomes and impacts. I'll now share some key insights around these challenges. Challenge one, we identify funding constraints as a key barrier to co-created citizen science and challenge funding bodies to provide investment opportunities that support co-created citizen science approaches, which can often be limited by time and research output criteria. Citizen science is known to be economically beneficial, achieving data collection and processing that surpasses what research teams can achieve on their own and for a fraction of the cost. We would like to highlight two key challenges. Firstly, timeframes and funding cycles. Co-created projects often have a much longer lifespan than other citizen science projects. And this is due to the intensive and open dialogue and negotiation that happens between the scientific and lay community in co-created projects. Funding timeframes and funding bodies, business cycles, for example, can often request a project must be completed, for example, in three or four years, which restricts many co-created approaches, which require time to establish relationships, time for agreements to be made and for mutual benefits to be realised. Secondly, funding often requires that clear outputs are identified before the project begins. However, for a project to be truly co-created, community and scientists need to be able to work together extensively to identify the outcome and methods of the project. This collaborative element can be in conflict with funding expectations that require output details from the outset. Funding bodies can often expect to have these aspects of projects identified before granting funds resulting in the first stages of the process being unfunded and future funding being uncertain, unless funding bodies are willing to be more open and experimental. Cultural change is required of funders as the issue of resourcing underpins the ability of co-created endeavours to establish mutuality of partnerships and long-term commitment. In our paper, we highlight that financial and human resourcing issues can be addressed by encouraging funding bodies to support more organic and bottom-up research endeavours. Challenge two. Citizen science is unique because of its partnerships. However, we find a prevailing perception of and value placed on scientific knowledge which can inhibit true co-creation. In contributory and collaborative project, projects, scientists maintain a position of power over the process, whereas co-created projects follow the participatory model pursuing partnerships. One of the barriers to sustaining mutual partnerships around science-based issues is the prevailing perception of scientific knowledge as superior to other forms of knowledge, meaning that there is a lack of value placed on the knowledge, experience and skills of citizens. This lack of value for lay knowledge can lead to researchers' reluctance to share power, meaning that their contributions to a project maintain seniority over others. This lack of a sense of value and validity can also influence citizen communities themselves, where they may lack confidence and a sense of legitimacy in being part of the scientific process. Part of the philosophy behind the deliberative science communication model is that scientific knowledge alone is not sufficient to address the complex problems of today. It is important that we don't assume that all citizens want to collaborate with scientists, know how to, or even feel empowered to do so. Citizens may find themselves engaging in a process, responsibility or commitment that they don't want or feel capable of. Creating an effective and rewarding mutual partnership can prove to be a challenging task, 
but where both parties are interested, willing, and have an understanding of what is required to achieve success, co-created citizen science can foster co-learning and bring scientific and lay knowledge closer to alignment. To prosper, both parties must be willing and able to listen and learn from each other's knowledge, skills, and experiences. Scientists must relinquish some of their power over decision-making and citizens must be confident and assertive in sharing their knowledge and expertise. Both parties need to be willing and flexible to be committed to working towards a common goal. And challenge three, benefits for both communities and science. We find that in a co-created partnership, benefits need to support both communities and science. In discussing this theme, we challenge traditional scientific outputs, outcomes and impacts. Scientists typically want papers, awards, funding, etc., as outputs of their research. This requires certain scientific process and rigor to be followed. These outputs equate to academic career success. In contrast, communities typically want answers, solutions and change from their community work. That's why they've come together. The problems and challenges they face often impact and influence their quality of life and well-being in very direct and tangible ways. The outputs they need are often political and scientific outputs aren't a silver bullet for political problems. There's potential therefore for a huge misalignment of needs and goals when scientists and communities come together. Co-created and highly participatory research processes have demonstrated time and time again that significant scientific rigor and powerful ground truthing can be achieved when lay and scientific knowledge are combined. Scientists can gain greater validity and reliability from their results with projects having been built firmly within the appropriate context and method is ground truthed, making it more reliable. And with the rigor of the scientific process, communities find that the outcomes and solutions that come out of processes are more appropriate and applicable to their community. Therefore, having a greater impact, but also equipping the community with new skills that can empower them in the future. As I come to the end of this presentation, we'd like to summarize the key themes. This slide highlights the key opportunities and challenges faced when approaching co-creative practice. For funding bodies, scientists and communities, there are challenges and there are benefits. For funding bodies, we have the challenge of rigidity and measures of success that don't necessarily support citizen science. And we have the issue of timeframes when we know it can take years for projects to develop and partnerships to be established. In terms of benefits, we see the long-term impact stem from enabling co-created approaches. We see community built through trust, which takes substantial time. For scientists, we see that the benefits of added depth and nuance and a greater understanding of the socio-environmental dimensions of problems in a specific community context. However, the challenges of power and of the elevation of scientific knowledge may hold scientists back from true co-created approaches. And lastly, but certainly not least, communities. As discussed, the challenges for community in pursuing co-created projects and partnerships relate to lack of familiarity with scientific methodologies and challenges to ensure community objectives are pursued. By modifying and deepening the relationship between scientists and the public, significant opportunities are presented for creating change and taking action, particularly on risks and concerns of communities, of which are increasing as we tackle climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution. We would like to thank all the participants of the AXA 2008 Co-Created Citizen Science Symposium. And I would like to say a big thank you to you for listening today. See you. Thank <laughs> you.